Okay, we have another double integral where reversing the order of integration is necessary. The integrand uh, is 6e to the x uh, to the fourth, right? So x to the fourth is the exponent on e. And we can't find the antiderivative as it stands in terms of x first. What we need is an x cubed um, down in front, so we could do a u substitution with a different power by one, let u be x to the fourth. And so that's what we need to get by switching uh, the order of the limits of integration. Uh, let's figure out what the region looks like. We have x's between, on the low end, the cube root of y, and on the high end, 2. Y is between 0 and 8. And so, uh, the one curve is x equals the cube root of y. If x equals the cube root of y, cube both sides, y is x cubed. That's how we're more familiar looking at the curve. And so that's the curve y equals x cubed. Let's go ahead and graph these two guys. Um, y equals x cubed looks like a curve like that. And uh, x equals 2 is a vertical line. Uh, y equals 0 is the x-axis. And y equals 8 just happens to be this point here that uh, they intersect at. So it's not drawn to scale at all. Sorry about that. But uh, let me take a picture of it. And we'll do it both, uh, represent both it as a dx dy as it's given and a dy dx so we can get better at the skill of uh, being able to find out these limits of integration. We have a rectangle that uh, is dx dy first. That's us using rectangles that are horizontal and moving them vertically in order to get the uh, volume of the region under that curve and uh, under that surface and above that region. But uh, we want to switch it and do it as dy dx. So we use a vertical rectangle and move it horizontally. So uh, we get to figure out what the limits of integration are for the lower and upper part of that rectangle. On the low end, y is equal to 0. On the high end, y is equal to x cubed. We had uh, the curve first described as x is the cube root of y. This is our dx dy. And here is our dy dx where we flip that and have it as y equals x cubed. That's our high end limit of integration. So this then becomes y is between 0 and x cubed. What about the x's? The lowest x ever gets is 0. The highest x ever gets is 2 as we move to cover up the region. So that's our uh, new limits of integration. So we're going to have the integral from 0 to 2, the integral from 0 to x cubed. You know what? Let's pull the 6 all the way out. We have e to the x to the 4th. 
and now we're doing a dy dx where it has no y's, uh, the integrand has no y's in it, we treat it as a constant and what we get out is um, sorry, uh, e to the x squared, I'm sorry, e to the x to the fourth and that'll be times y as y goes from zero up to x cubed Then we have this outside integration from 0 to 2 in dx. So uh, we put in the limits of integration for y, not for x, for y. And that just conveniently brings our x cubed down that we need. We have the 6 on the outside. We have the x cubed. So now we have that x cubed to help us with the u substitution. Remember how they differ in power by 1. And so now we'll be in good shape to finish this off. If u is x to the fourth, then du is 4x cubed dx. So that. Uh, x cubed dx gets replaced by one fourth of du. So we end up with one fourth um, e to the u du. And so we get uh, one fourth e to the u. And so that's going to be for us then one fourth e to the. So we have the six already out there. Now we have one fourth e to the x to the fourth. And that's evaluated from zero to two. So that's going to be um, three halves once we reduce. e to the 16 by plugging in 2, 2 to the 4, 16, and then um, e to the 0 is 1. We can't assume that's going to zero out like things normally happen for us. So 3 halves e to the 16 um, minus 1. Yeah. That would be our answer.